Hello, I'm Radagast, and this is installation number four of the Mystic and the Moose, and here I am with the Moose Raksha Moose. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Hello. We're playing Click Wars already. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. Your competence um, <laughs> created a conflict with, m m I don't know, my desire to be a good moderator. I appreciate it. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing well, um, especially given, um, you know, the, I guess the topic would be uh, post-eclipse decompression. A good choice. Good choice. Yeah. And the eclipse was definitely an event for a lot of people. Um, for one reason or another and for some of us immediately during and after uh, a lot of things have transpired so tonight i guess we're going to be discussing a few of those events and some of the thoughts ideas sites Points of references. Yeah, try to make this a little a little personal, but you know, tr trying to see the collective um, ramifications. Yes. Okay, so um, what one of the things I'd like to presence is the you know our friend Adam and his comment that he had made about. For him, him seeing it, you know, again, we share sharing visions, and that he saw the um, the eclipse as the water breaking on this cosmic uh, event of September twenty third, twenty fourth, when Jupiter emerges from the belly of Virgo. And I remember when he said it, I listened to everything, and I said, "Okay, let me see," because from my sense was the water breaking actually at the full, you know, right after the full moon on the seventh. But I'll be darned if um, one of the kind of most telling global things going on post-eclipse is how much flooding there is. I think it's Mumbai. I think it's Manila um, and Houston. Just to name three, there's got, I think there's like four or five others. I remember I recently read a list of notable flooding, and it was at least seven names on it. I tried to look locate it before the show, but I couldn't find it. So I went, man, that's serious water breaking. Yeah. And and then we saw it occur. Now, um, I, beautifully, I Houston residents seem to be responding in a really great community fashion and helping each other out. And um, during a time when most people say, well, who did you vote for type of stuff? This, that, that's not part of the discussion for volunteering and helping. And um, so I don't know what's going on in Manila. I don't know what's going on uh, at, at Mumbai. But, you know, from, you know, speaking from an American point of view, um, it's just a very, very cleansing about the after, you know, right now the aftermath, at least from the human beings. Um, the government, we're not going to talk about, we're talking about human beings here and the impact this has on the collective. And, um, it seemed to me like there, there was, I'm hoping there was a real washing away of a lot of just the needless crap that becomes part of our patternings, our speech patterns, um, even maybe our assessment patterns. And just finding out that we, they're almost like dirt on our glasses or something. That, you know, there's something important called each other, humanity, uh, human to human, take, taking care of human to human. And that, you know, that that was temporarily cleared and now they're seeing it. And I don't, I don't, um, I don't see the glasses muddying up so quickly or so easily might be the, the proper word. I've used a phrase for a, a long time 
in my repetitive speech, which is those that see it, see it, those that don't, don't. And it, I use it enough because, uh, in enough different ways, enough different cycles, because it has relevance to a variety of different things. And one of those is, I have a strong belief that when we're born into this world and into this place, that we see so much more than our adult selves allow us to. Mm -hmm. And that's a great deal to do with because of basically the veils that we either have placed over our eyes through how we're raised as a child, our experiences before we reach the age of um, conscious, consciousness or the age of accountability. Um, basically the age where we can make our own right or wrong moral decisions. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and for each person that's different, that age. Um, and from there, it is a combination of some people do uh, put veils on us. Some of them, most of them we accept, but a lot of them we allow, we, we put on ourselves. No, we're, we're not going to see that. We're not going to participate in that. We're not going to accept this as truth or reality. And what I, what I've seen is a lot of people are starting to take not only those veils off, but a lot of those essentially veils off of their ears too. And it's starting to see the, the oneness, the, I, I, and not just the oneness singular, but the, the wholeness, the harmonics of how everything comes together, the individual comes together to create the whole, the unit. And not everybody is going to look the same, be the same, act the same, have the same duty and responsibility, um, believe in the same thing, think the same way. But that doesn't negate each individual from recognizing the other individual as part of the whole. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's part of what this new birthing is going to be. And I think part of that is in what we've seen as the quote unquote water breaking. Um, it's kind of one of those treacherous topics to talk about because people feel a lot um, about a lot <laughs> when it comes to any kind of tragedy or event that affects the lives of so many. Um, but there has to be some kind of evaluation of when it happens, how do people respond? How do people act? What is the theories going in on how people are going to respond and act? What is the cultural climate? And if we look at the weeks leading up to it, it seems like people are acting in the exact opposite response to what our cultural climate, especially in the Southern regions, Mm -hmm. were it seems like there's been a bit of a shakeup in the Patrix 
And I remember, so after I said to myself, okay, this is definitely, the, to me, the water event that Adam saw, saw uh, associated with the eclipse. Um, and so I'm looking at the effects of this water event. And they're kind of a transpersonal, you know, they're kind of a collective type of thing. I, and as I shared last night, I still think that on the, right after the full moon breaks, I think there's going to be a more personal uh, water breaking a moment. And um, that's going, I think that's going to look different. And I'm, um, and I think there's a, there's a real chance for this to uh, to be also seen geopolitically, you know, on a national stage. Um, I'm not sure what it's going to look like, but connected to birthing, I don't, you know, there's so there. The, and the interesting thing is, people, what are you people talking about? What is this metaphor with the birth and everything? And again, it's tied to what we're doing with a celestial event. And, um, and the fact that as we look at it, we, at least, right, we see things, I see things. I wanted to be careful with that we for a moment. I have been very outspoken on having visions and dreams and for sightings. So I'm not, af I'm not afraid to be, um, subjugated to, uh, the witch trials. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, then I also, um, that I think I shared with you last night and see in too many, in many ways, there's like one kind of symbolic or, kind of causal, you know, the actual, you know, Jupiter itself in the sky. And then the shadow, shadowing effect on the earth. And so, and so in many ways, Zeus is not a baby, you know, Zeus, Jupiter, it's not a baby. It's not a baby being born. It, this is, so in many ways, in a very aeonic way uh, or pleuromic way, this is an emanation. But in this case, you know, Virgo represents Sophia, which is who's an aeon. Um, you know, so to me, it is there's kind of like this new emanation. Um, and the reason you usually emanate is because there's a purpose for that emanation. Um, am I holding you up from something? No, I, I'm just, I'm percolating. Okay, so now we have the birth of, to me, what I would call a baby because that's where the water breaking comes in. And it seems every time I'm trying to objectify it, the energy seems to me to want to collectively subjectify it. To make the turn it into, in, into penetrable English. Um, where as much as I, it's, it's almost as if this this reception of the baby is more correctly seen on an internal level. Um, whereas Jupiter in the sky is, we're going to see to me more on like a structure um, system level, the structures, um, the the things that make up those structures. I don't think things are gonna do so well. Um, and as a human being, I don't put myself in the thing category. And I hope nobody out there puts themselves in the thing category. There's definitely a movement of people that are trying to integrate with things and become people thing chips, but um, no, for the 
the average everyday person, the, the root goal is um, to be a person, to be a human, to be a living being that even in that, that is, one is an action word and one is a, 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 a state, a status word. So one you're, you're actually actively doing. And then one you're, you're just, you're being. Mm -hmm. Um, there's it in that there is a balance that that is missing there's a lot of people that do 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 they believe they're all about the living aspect whether it's collection of things and mementos and products or going on adventures and um, testing life, um, or even the just monotony of being about the doing of. And then there is the other extreme of just not doing anything, but just being. And we can see this from anything of 100% of absolute, uh, meditation, which, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to judge, um, if some people need to do that to keep the walls of reality from collapsing, then that's what they need to do. Um, but there are other people that, that simply take advantage of the, I'll just be and let others do when they're damn well capable of doing mm -hmm. and it's not just on a physical level right it's on an emotional level it's on a spiritual level and part of this this birthing again is is you're, you're talking about it being a, a a personal thing um and again, this year being tied very much to judgment, what I'm, I'm really seeing is when it comes to eights, it's the life, death, and rebirth cycle over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And there, there's something about lessons only being able to be learned when it personally affects someone. So we have a group thing that challenges us and we are tested and our, our grace and compassion endures. What happens when it's just on the individual level what happens when it's just us mm -hmm. I w again i was talking yesterday about what why don't we talk about the things like integrity and truth and honesty when it comes to, you know, characteristics and, and, and the dialogue of how um, we should be raising our youth. Um, we keep talking about the, the things that are wrong with the world. We keep talking about the negative things of the world. We keep talking about all the examples of why things are shitty, but, Where's the dialogue and discussion about where things 
can be improved? Where are the positive things? What are the positive things? What can be reinforced? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then we, we kind of circle back and, and when people wonder why are things out of balance, Well, there's some people that are just being that should be living. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and conditions at the moment on, on the planet, you know, the way the world that's been built on this planet are, um, there's, gonna, there's a little um, cleaning up and uh, new management is needed. Seriously, new management and um, and top down from some distant place. Not to make you can't throw a tomato at them. I don't want them called. I don't want them making decisions for me. Yeah, <laughs> you got to live by the rotten tomato rule. <laughs> and I, you know, I say that with great mirth. Because again, you know, if you put out a bad idea, if you do something that everybody's like, what do you think we're stupid? You no, know, I, again, some, some, you know, fetid produce is to me not a, not a, I think it has a humorous way. I mean, I'm not saying we have to do that, but I mean, just that approach. You know, I mean, it's just like, and to me, that's the way the Republic is set up. You know, I mean, and that would be reserved for a scoundrel, not like, you know, hey, we need to talk to you. It's just like, no, no, no. That was so egregious. No, you need a tomato or two. And then we'll talk. <laughs> you know what I'm also wondering and I'm I'm almost I am I am hoping for, but I'm wondering more so if since this has been a gestational period and the Virgin is giving birth, if this won't bring back a, a, a more healthy balance of the rightful mother energy. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, I don't know, what are your thoughts? Restoration, the restoration of her primacy of <laughs> as, who first to turn to when you think you you need to connect to the big stuff? Um, one of my problems, you know, as somebody who who might fall under a Gnostic category, but I don't like it because of so much of what we of what most of what's been printed that is known about the Gnostics has to do with the Hag, Hag, Hama, Nag Hammadi texts which is to me largely a Gnostic world in turmoil, losing its shit, losing its religion. And, um, you know, you can pick little parts out, but any, you know, anybody trying to go into that without having an idea of the mysteries that fed into that and the lot, the real lifestyle, um, you know, this, how community was built how important shamans played and how there were different roles for that. Not every shaman was a sky watcher, but the sky watcher and the shaman would be conversing. And, and, and together they would bring together their talents to try to bring meaning to the community, bring their, bring their community into a living dynamic planet connected to a living dynamic cosmos and not only that, we even had at that time a history of where we originated in the cosmos, how how there was a you know panspermic moment, so there's lots of beings like us, but because of a certain cosmic anomaly of an aeon joining us, we the, so a species that actually has multiple representation around a galaxy finds itself in a situation that's particularly blessed. And, but at the same time, to me, that, that opportunity, this is such an opportunity. This is like, you know, we're, we have this, 
resonant part of the of the galaxy that created us with us and and we see it in the crazy i mean there are other planets with vegetation everybody from what i can tell all right you know from what we get supposedly the other races are astonished by the diversity and that diversity is because of because we actually this isn't just the panspermia playing out this is like ooh, look what i get to play with and we have one of the creative aeons of all of this with us the ancients knew this and it 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 was doing i, I the more formalized these schools got the more per, you know the, the more they started becoming accepted because of what they offered in the way of basic you know mathematics geometry um basic masonry house building you know the skills these were called the lesser mysteries um I'm quite sure, you know, basic metallurgy for how to make garden implements, you know, stuff of use, not weaponry. And um, so I just, I feel. And then which, which, just to break in, which we would call today the crafts. Yes. So I'll recede for a second and let you, you take, take over again. So the craft, you know, what's, you know, so in many ways, what used to be the crafts then got turned into witchcraft because of these mystery schools and it became the craft. <laughs> but a whole way of life was destroyed. And it was destroyed <clears throat> to make way for new rulers who shortly after shocking people with their warriors would introduce new male angry gods. And, and there would be one particularly angry male God that for some reason would take supremacy over all the other ones and arise as this, this, this being or this description of a being that fills that psychological space that we all have called the God space. Atheists usually will fill it with the golden rule or their own sense of their own, who needs God? I can be as good. And again, when you're comparing yourself to the Old Testament God, you don't have to be so good before you think you've, that you can say, you know something? I can run a cleaner ship than this guy. It's not really hard to do. And, um, but, and, and as that kind of paved through our mind, the whole ancient world got paved over with a, with a history of these rulers and their conquests and the history is telling us how brutish and ignorant you know we were before these people showed up for us and this in this whole false sense of who we are the sense of original sin you know the whole the whole thing that you owe like you like you owe your life to something as opposed to everything else in nature just seems to keep on moving forward you look at it, I mean, nature just keeps on popping and popping and popping. And if it can find new ways to pop, there's none of this payback time. Pay, and nature is not about payback. And so, you know, the whole thing that there was a whole natural state of mind, how we understood the universe through nature. And of course, through, through the higher mysteries. But nature itself was a teacher. And then here comes this new deity this new owner of the world and nature has just kind of disappeared to be explored uh, you you get it but this has been this this psychological damage is huge is huge 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 and it, and so many people left you know mount sinai let's say but then they just want they became a diaspora and they picked up a little of this and a little of that and everything became this eclectic cosmology that none of us have a common map to and we to be able to be a people a community we need a common cosmological map and i like one with a really benevolent deity i guess you know i don't the word ruler is not applicable um and that even with the moment you hear rule and stuff like this, you know this is the archons pushing through. That's their that's their crude, unimaginative, jealous style. It's spiteful. It's jealous. It can only it can only it can only take down what's been built. And if, and then and when it tries to replace what it takes down, it's nothing but a poor mimicry. Um. So anyway, I guess that'll be that'll be my little um, 
we have to re to me i to me one of the most important things i really do is for people to understand that that for thousands tens of thousands of years we lived on a loving planet that was our deity and this this was a back and forth kind of love this wasn't a worshiping this was an acknowledgement this was a celebration the rituals were celebrations remembrances you know the cosmology gets told in a short, you know over and over again so everybody re remains connected and by the time you get to the gnostic everybody wants to get back to the pleroma you know you know where where, where we started everybody's oh we'll get back to the pleroma it's just like hey, look i know the place has been trashed but it's really just a crust it's really just a crust and much of that crust is in here and if you can just break that initial crust, reconnect, you find it affects your behavior. And that affected behavior will not support this bogus Patrix world. I guess in, in your summation, you're, you're hitting on the nerve of, of the temperature read of the the shamanic, shamanistic community at large, the greater mystic community as well. Um, in, in that uh, coddling time is over, um, it's time to have the real discussion, the real dialogue. Um, these twisted tales of of what history was needs to be spoken to we we need to to course correct on on a few things and even just in those things if if we can come back into alignment it's amazing how much more uh, peaceful um, and just even agreeable our society would be. Um, this concept that the only the only things we can't do are the things we tell ourselves we can't do because we are putting limits on ourselves. Um, and I'm keeping it in the realm of like, not walking off a building and saying I can walk off a building so I can walk off a building. Like not that realm of woo. Mm -hmm. um, but so many times when we're working with each other and the words or phrases I can't come up. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. It's too hard. Um, it hurts too much. Um, what What is your feeling or thinking on that? Do you know something? You just ask, ask the last part of the question. Okay. Please, I'm sorry to do that. No, that's fine. Um, like when we're, we're, we're in a group, we're working with someone and the, like, the I can't or um, I don't want to, it hurts too much, um, all, the, all those kind of things. Like, what's your opinion on that? What do you think? What do you feel when you encounter that? Well, I usually wait for how quickly the response comes. Um, an immediate response is, is a curious response. Um, because to know thyself, I mean, um, it's not something most of, most of us are really proficient at. And, and then if, even if you do know yourself, usually you give yourself a moment or two to give a, an answer. Especially something you're going to say you can't. Mm -hmm. 
when you say you can't do something, you should be able to say that from a point of integrity and honor about what you can do. Mm -hmm. In other words, you are aware of what you can do. That's why you can say, I can't do this. In my view, then you've dabbled in something. Um, so then, but if it really seems like it's not exactly a real answer, um, I, well, it depends, you know, it depends on, on person to person. There are certain people that I've been with people. Sometimes you prick that bubble a little bit and it actually is productive. And usually you find out at your first attempt to prick that bu bubble, whether it's going to go well. That is true. Um, and I'm you, I'm not one to pursue uh, a path somebody doesn't want to take. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing, that, I mean, it's almost a secondary um, thing that might occur to me. It says I can't do that. You know, I almost want to ask him, are you sure that's what you want me to hear? You know, um, because we're all taking inventory. Mm hmm and um you know it's do you wish to participate um you know and again i just uh, to me the fact that somebody said they can't but i can do this i mean to me that's a natural replacement for somebody's trying to hold on to their honor and integrity if you care about honor and integrity and i'm not talking about silly knight's honor I'm talking about the honor mm -hmm. of your sovereign divine being that can be counted on to be honest, even if you're a jerk. Mm -hmm. um, you know, jerkish honesty is at least honest. I mean, you know, it's, um, <clears throat> and it's something I indulge in myself sometimes. Um, kind of goes with the coyote medicine. <laughs> See, I, I've found that where I used to, um, take a softer approach to those kind of responses mm -hmm. in the last couple of weeks, there's been almost zero tolerance for that and a very, not not mean or cold, but a very direct response to it in a I I don't accept that answer. I don't I don't receive that answer. Yes, you can. You're choosing not to because. Mm. And it's it's changes like that which I'm I'm getting a lot of feedback from other people that work um in the same style that I do, or even in therapeutic settings, like actual bona fide, you know, the letters behind their names, right? Um, where they're not, um, handholding. And it's, it's all started after the eclipse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From several of the, the licensed ones in the more formal settings that I'm not able to have as deep as conversations that I would like to, their response was, it was almost like, a, and this was two separate responses, um, that were and paraphrasing because they're almost identical. It was almost like a switch went off and the, the no bullshit meter was, was just full. <laughs> and there was an urgency behind just deal with your shit. We can't play around anymore. Right. Yes. And the the conversation around you know it's how do you politely tell someone 
I, I cannot spend my time and my resource on you because you're choosing not to, to do your work, mm-hmm. you know, and for a lot of people that seems very mean, even if they're not the ones being told, sit down. Yeah. I noticed that people being offended for others. <laughs> yes. And that's, uh, I, don't know, I don't even know what to say about that. Um, I call that tri- in a way it's triangulation where there's a dynamic between two people and a third person introduces their dynamic into that dynamic instead of letting them get it straight. Cause, um, to me, that's the best way you, you deal with boundaries and stuff like that is one-on-one. And, um, when people, and, and then, yeah, I mean, when people get offended for others, um, why? Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, it's, I guess it's a form of white knight type stuff. <clears throat> I mean, okay. I, I'm laughing because I've been, I've had this directed at me so many times um, for nonsensical reasons. I, I get it if it's a, a great injustice has been done. The, victim has no voice for themselves for whatever varying degree of reason and a rallying cry must be made. Mm -hmm. Those situations are fewer and far in between than the cacophony of caterwauling screeches from triggered individuals feeling the need to take out their own damaged fuckery out on other people by feeling triggered for other people and using their most often very loud voices as some kind of sick stand-in for another person that doesn't need a loud cheerleader. That's probably in my top five, like. It, it breaks my head. I have also noticed my, you know, myself want, sh- not wanting, actually shedding things. And in the shedding of things, I'm finding that I now have some energy to do things that I think that I think are productive. Yes. Um, and, and what I think is, is productive is a combination of what's productive for me, but also because I'm part of the community, I'm a musician, I'm looking to be productive into the community where I can. So that's been, that was behind my latest Mystic Brew. You know, talk a little bit, my, my, my post, uh, whatever that was. My, my, own, uh, my own personal post-eclipse <laughs> post <laughs> event. And, um, and then they, sh- you know, share some music and I, you know, and I had some people, they liked the pictures and, um, and so I'm going to put up a, a real, I'm going to put up a nice little package of those two songs really well presented. So it's kind of like a, a nice thing, but, um, it was, it's, it's, it's largely because I, there's, for some, there seems to be like a, a good push pull to this <coughs> where the same energy that makes me want to get rid of what is just dragging me down or not really good use of my time. Mm -hmm. And some, a lot of that time is helping other people, but then I'm looking at what I'm helping them with and what is that doing? Mm -hmm. And um, so I, again, this isn't like, this isn't slash and burn. This isn't cut the tentacles or, you know, this is, this is just like, I, you're looking kind of like on your calendar and you're going, I remember this, this part of my calendar takes up like this much time and, and the fruit is I'm tired. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have some happy friends and I, I like that, 
but again, I'm also like, okay, so they're happy. So they, ha you know, we all have this, this product and what have we done? You know? And so, um, and I don't know what putting out music will do, but first of all, it's joy for me. People seem to like it. And part of this doing something new, rebirthing ourselves, I think I, I want to contribute to the soundtrack. You know, when we grew up, you know, it was Crosby, Stills and Nash, or like when I grew up, you know, and, you know, Beatles, Rolling Stones, Elvis Presley for early, but he was still around, you know, it was just, we had a, we had a soundtrack. And, um, and to me, the Uncle Butchie lends an ambiance. You know, and there's, you know, there's no, you know, there's no anthem thing going on here. And I, I think, I think we've grown up past the anthem. I think the anthem at every level, whether it's a rock anthem or a national anthem. I mean, it's, 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 I mean, look, I know what it feels like. It feels good, but it's really interesting how, I don't know, that can, that can become its own activity that really doesn't produce any fruit other than when, while you were doing it, it certainly felt good. And to me, there are other ways to feel good. This is not about, let's not, no, let's feel great. Let's feel great. And this, to me, there's a lot to feel great about. <laughs> and it all starts with how special we are in our placement and creation. But we, part, part of the reason of appreciating that is because we're, we've been, the, the positive in the world that gives us a creation story that we're not special, we're cursed. And it's very hard to really feel great about yourself on the planet, in the universe, and what you might be able to bring when you're told you're cursed. This is like you're part of your psychological, uh, spiritual upbringing. And I consider that to have been something that, that has hurt us enormously. And I think, but I think the healing can happen really, really quick. And, and it's really, and again, these, these are the systems I address not people. I don't talk. I, I'm, if it's, you know, go, Hey, you sound like you might be talking about me. I'm not talking about any one. I'm talking about systems that scoop people up They've been around for centuries. And if you get born in a family that's already been scooped up, you get scooped up. It's just a big <laughs> to suck them up. <laughs> and, I, and I, you know, I think it's okay for us to go, you know what? I don't feel like being part of the sucked up. And, 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 and just sucked into this machine. And even my connection to the universe, to this thing called God, is already given to me. And any exploration I conduct on my own is not valid. This doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel like the way I was created. I really feel like an extension of what created all this. And it's peering out to avert my very moist, sloppy biological eyes but because of the brain that we have and the bill and the frequencies we can process, we realize that we're at the special end of that reaching into 3D. We're in a very special configuration, but we need access to the planet and we need access to the, our history of being on this planet, how we got here and why we're here. And this kind of, a quick, just a quick preview, even the Hopi who might say, no, we come from the Pleiades. We don't come from the planet Earth. That doesn't make a difference. They came to planet Earth because planet Earth is special. And now they're all, they were all, they are all about mother Earth. So that, you know, that's, you know, this is a special place. And people who love the Earth, like an, like an indigenous type of people who say they come from another star system, love this planet. This is a yummy, delicious, playful, loving, and because but befitting our intelligence and our situation, a little, a little capricious because you got to be on your toes. With the archons around, you need to be on your toes. Hmm. I mean, nature gives you little hints. We don't actually have to deal with predators per se because we can set that up. But like you know, I've always said, the supernatural and the natural are just really the same thing. So if you look out in the jungle and you see things that look like, oh, well, it's good for me to either go in there with some skill or stay the fuck out. <laughs> That's kind of like the next dimension. 
Ajá. Um, it's not to say it's not to say stay out, but again, it's not a place to just go wandering into. And it's not a place to go into unnecessarily. Um, sometimes you need to gather some of the things that only the jungle can give you. Do your work, get out. <laughs> there are so many times that I am called to physical locations like wherever I live to help close some kind of something because someone heard it was a good idea to burn a whole bunch of sage in their house or do some kind of cleansing ritual something and they had no idea what they were doing and sloppy intent and then they're wondering why you know the sage is unanchoring everything in the house and everything in their girlfriend <laughs> and everything in them yeah to use the sacred without respect can have some blowback because you're dealing with intelligence And it, 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 that, I don't say that in any way to sound like elitist or, you know, higher than thou. But there are reasons why there were particular individuals in the tribe, in the cultures, in the communities that devoted their life to understanding particular things. Mm -hmm. It didn't make them better than the tribe. It did make them essential to the tribe, just like any other member of, you know, functioning member, participatory member of the tribe. Yeah, I mean, and, 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 and just the, the last closing thought of that, again, it cycles back to what I keep saying, everybody can do something, and each something is as valid as the other. No, I think sharing these things, I mean, some people are like, oh, you think you're whatever. You're sh sharing is sharing. I don't see anything snooty about sharing. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of like you put something on a table. If you need it, take it. If you don't, leave it. Don't mm -hmm. complain that somebody put it there and then you already, because you already have it, you're now offended. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so anyway, so back to the music a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm just I um, I'm really um, kind of stoked, and um, I to dig down into myself because again, putting out music means a lot of work. You know, editing different name, you know, and especially if I'm not gonna have a live drummer composing a drum track, which can be a day in itself. Yes. Um, um, you know, words that aren't finished, whatever, but I just, I just feel, um, I just feel this sense of wanting to get some music out there. The fact that I'm playing with Uncle Butch a lot and I have an, another hour and a half to go through tonight, hope to pull something off of it. We'll see. But, um, you know, I just, I, I would, we need to also refine ourselves as to me as producers the whole societal programming is to be a consumer the reason you have a job isn't to produce it's to get money to consume and provide some cog service as you get that money to hand back to them in a the form of cons consumption or rent or insurance but anyway basically you, you know you go out and work and earn money and hand it back basically to the same system that gave it to you um, <clears throat> and under appreciation for your efforts. Um, at least if you did a job, a, a job well done, we won't get into all that stuff because right we're at such a dysfunctional place uh, in the world. Think you could point a finger anywhere and you'll find a proper target. 
um, to me that this is just a good time to that that self that look that you know that that self reflection and um, be gentle. Do you know You know, don't don't be coddling. You know, there's no you don't need to. This is but get real. Get real. You know, there's there's only so gentle you can be before you're not real. Mm-hmm. And um, just look at the places that things seem to be mucking up. And is it something you need to, to take out of your life, or is it some place that you might be able to make an inner adjustment? I know in my approach to life, I find the answers in both of those categories. And you only get the answer by taking an honest look. And you can't favor an answer. The only f- you favor the correct answer. The one that allows you to stay in integrity. And in your integrity, you maintain uh, that personal power. Personal. You know, it's not about other people. But when you have your own personal power, people respond to that. And contrary to popular belief, you can part ways on the path with someone and it not be uh, some big, negative, disastrous, messy event. Mm-hmm. You, you can go separate ways and it be civil. You can dismiss someone from your life that is not adding to it in a positive manner and not be an asshole about it. <clears throat> and uh, I, I, one of the things that I see happen very frequently is people start to recognize when they start to wake up and start to take the evaluation, the checklist of, of what's going on around them, and they start to realize some of the, the shitty things that people have done around them. Mm-hmm they start to swipe out in anger. Mm. And it's unfortunate because it's, you're having this, this waking up of, you know, time to clean house. And instead of allowing it to be a, a truly purifying process, um, that toxicity still gets in. That's usually when it's more of a reaction than an action. Yeah. And, um, yeah, go ahead. Um, and sometimes, you know, in, in thinking of, you know, how to tell people that, you know, I just don't have the time right now to invest the energy. Um, that is an act of grace and compassion for that individual to give them an opportunity to sit back and to understand potentially their circumstance a little bit more. Um, Because if the individual doesn't want to make any progress or work towards something better, you can give them everything and they're going to end up right back where they started. Mm -hmm. Um, And so in making that time by being more selective and working with the people that truly want it. And even in that, you know, being, being balanced and being healthy and making sure that, you're giving to community, but you're also taking time for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, it allows you to to dig into your passions, dig into the things that you love. Um, you're doing music. I've been working on jewelry um, and music and Um, I'm still, I'm actually working with more people now in a week than I was before with 
quite a few people that just weren't working through their stuff. Hmm. It was it was pretty much here's all my my bullshit. You deal with it. I'll be back in a week to dump more shit. Hmm. And I I don't particularly feel bad for saying I I don't have time to work with you. Mm -hmm. Um, But some of that kind of leads into another topic. Um, You know, with you working on music, me working on music and, and jewelry, and there's a lot of artists in the community Mm -hmm. of varying degree um, and medium a few different musicians um, and a couple other people that work on jewelry or enchanted armor as I call it. Mm. Um, I was, I was sitting back and I was just kind of taking notice of um, the, the art in community. Um, the passion and fire of the craft in community. Mm-hmm. And we had a, a, a brief little, you know, dialogue on that. Um, and I, I think it resonated with you a bit too. Mm-hmm. Um, thinking of ways to support and nurture that that spark yes um i know um somebody who who is known i guess is niche to some speculum and to others and mama dini if you're on mines the last couple of days it's like almost every day she's putting out some uh handicraft piece of art whatever it's been it's, it's been like she obviously has been fired up because you know i i keep an eye on her postings mm-hmm. and this past week has been like you know a productive fire and um yeah you know something i can the i guess kind of like a community platform um to to be able to share is something you know like at some point, maybe we could get figured out if there seemed, you know, to be, you know, demand, a desire for it, really, a desire, you know, like people like, oh, yeah, I like that idea. Okay. So um, I would love to have a place where the people in the community can look at what, you know, what I do artistically or even listen. Because I think you can post MP3s, videos, things like that. Mm hmm. And um, some place that's not in the, you know, in the middle of YouTube. Um, yeah. Because you can post something on YouTube, hit it unlisted, and put it on a place like like a WordPress type of thing, so anybody there can click on it and see it. But when somebody goes to YouTube looking for it, they won't find it. So you know, if there are certain people who go, I don't know if I'm ready to go public. So are you ready to go community? Mm-hmm. Um. But I guess we'll you know we'll find that out and feedbacks that come. I I am I'm a, I I have to assume there'll be at least a comment or two in feedback um, after this video. And I think that fits into what you were touching on earlier about being producers and not just consumers. Mm-hmm. it would help change our opinion of ourselves. I agree. And it doesn't have to be grand. Demonstrate to yourself the creativity that we are like saturated with. We are stupid with creativity. Mm -hmm. And um, our ability, a lot of times you, something you never did and suddenly you find you have a certain deftness for it or it's like, wow, this is coming to me. It's not the first time you're in a body, and so and the thing, the nice thing about arts and crafts, if they've been around for a long time, you can have some cellular cellular memory. 
ancestral memory to pull from during some of this stuff. I know when I first started sewing, not only was I pulling this strange memory of a, me being a woman in some kind of half earthen buried yurty type thing sewing while I was sewing the whole time I was smelling the kind of almost acrid smoke coming from a fire that was too smoky and too small a place. Um, and if, if I didn't, I was able to get rid of it if I didn't, but sometimes it just seemed like if I could hold the smell of that smoke, I, my fingers were guided because I was just doing this for the first time. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, it, it, it just, they, it came with sitting in this very crude thing with a fire in the middle and a little hole in the roof and, um, um, but it wasn't an, un an unpleasant memory. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like full of, you know, it wasn't full of bursting with joy. Part of it had to do with the h harsh cold of the outside. I mean, I got the, for some reason I got the, uh, um, like somewhere near Tibet, that kind of altitude and terrain and a kind of, you know, earth, half earth and half outside the earth type of dwelling you would have. So anyway, yeah. So I mean, creativity opens up all kinds of doors, and I mean, again, I just it really we have to remind ourselves who we are by doing what part of the things that are very natural to us, and not thinking about well, how much is this what I just produced worth? That's not how you look at it. That that might be a consideration, and there's nothing wrong with that consideration, but that is not the whole. That was not what fed that creation, um, especially when if you didn't have that thought beforehand. Like again, once something's out there, you might, there might be clever things to do with it in that fashion. But mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, it's everything in degrees. It's like don't do this. You should think this. No, no, no. You know, but you gotta have you know, it's like spices. Um, you know. There's just the you know there's just the right kind of touch to things, and there are certain dishes you just don't want spicy. <laughs> this is true. Well, do you feel? Um, I think we've got a nice little show here. We I think we've run just a little over an hour. Mm -hmm. This is a good conversation. I I I have been getting feedback, and the feedback is really good. You know, people that I talk to. Mm -hmm. uh, people have watched the videos and they they love them. That's good to hear. Yeah, they just um, they love where we go, and um, so that's all I could ask. I, I should probably say that's all we could ask. <laughs> all right, so um, I'm going to um, well, most why don't you say goodbye to all the nice people? All right, well. Thank you. Many blessings. Much love from Moose. And much love from me, Radagast at ModWiz125 on YouTube. And I'll see you next time.